Hello, fellow guitar geeks. Today, a comparison video that you've been asking for for a long, long, long time. It's the Strat Shootout, Harley Benton versus Jet Guitars. They are both two relatively affordable S-type guitars. On the surface, they look very, very alike, but they're made of different materials, they sound different, and they play differently. Which one's better? Let's find out. There is no tram there. There it is. Right, um, I thought I'd get the first impressions first of both guitars, and it's very clear to me that they, they are budget guitars, and remember throughout this entire video that we're looking at guitars that cost 129 euros, and the Jet Guitars, come here, is 169 euros. So throughout the entire video, remember, these are really cheap and affordable, and they're both really good. I just think one's better than the other. We have to find the best. Anyway, first impressions. Um, I feel that the Harley Benton can have a little bit more finishing. The frets are sticking out a little bit, and I think that could have had a bit more attention to detail. And the Jet Guitars needs new strings. It needs decent strings. They feel um, they feel like they're cheap strings, whereas the Harley Benton has Daddario strings. So professional strings, cheap strings, nice feeling neck, fret sprout, so I can feel it, not cutting into my hand, but I can feel these frets, uh, I can feel the metal when I play, which is not great, especially up there. And that's not the case with the Jet. The one thing I'm not gonna be doing in this video is expecting these guitars to play perfectly, and you shouldn't either. These are very affordable Strat style guitars, and I expect both of them to have some things that are not great about them. Of course, I'm gonna play the guitars and we're gonna hear them a lot in this video. However, I'm also gonna very strongly focus on the tuning stability and the build quality and the reliability, because if you're new to guitar and you're watching this thinking about picking up a new S-type Stratocaster guitar, then maybe this kind of stuff is new to you. And it would be wrong of me to say, oh, that one sounds a little bit richer than that one. And that one sounds a little bit thinner. Although I, I might always say that, also say that. Yeah, I might do that as well, but I'm really gonna focus on making sure we get the, the bare minimum needed to discern between these two budget guitars. All right, let's crack on. Hold up! Before we go any further, um, can you please click like on the video if you're having fun so far, or click the down one, you know, that one, if you're, if you're miserable and you don't like guitar videos. But if you like it, then give me a thumbs up because it means more people get to see it. I hate that I have to ask you to do that, but I do it because it works. So, um, thumbs up. There's a price difference of around 40 euros between these guitars, the Harley Benton coming in at 129 and the Jet Guitars coming in at 169, but that's an RRP, so maybe they're a little bit cheaper in the shops, but we're gonna stick with those two prices for this video. Let's look at the build materials. To bring up the most important specs, we'll consult the Geek Pad, and it tells me that both guitars have a basswood body, so no alder, no ash, it's basswood. That's a pretty standard material for guitars of this price range. However, the Jet Guitars has a Canadian maple neck with a roasted maple fretboard. And looking at the neck, I think the neck is roasted as well, which is kind of a premium feature, whereas the Harley Benton just has a Canadian maple neck with a maple fretboard, so that's not roasted. Uh, if you're not sure what roasted is, it means, as it sounds, the Jet Guitar's neck has been roasted, or the wood has been roasted, sorry, before it was turned into a neck, meaning it got rid of some of that moisture and um, it should stay more stable than the Harley Benton. And that kind of, that seems to be true so far because the, the frets are sprouting, are coming out of the edge of the Harley Benton neck where it seems to have shrunk whereas the Jet Guitars hasn't because it's a roasted neck. The neck profile of the Harley Benton, or the, or the thickness, the way it feels when you cup it in your hand, is a C, and the Jet Guitars is a modern C. And to compare them both, let's feel them. Mm. 
there is not much in it. They feel pretty much the same. So if you're wondering about which one is best for your hand shape, there is not much in that at all. I do prefer the feel of the Harley Benton because the Harley Benton is a satinized neck and the Jet Guitars is very, very glossy and therefore a little bit sticky. It's not too thick with the poly, but it, it is a little bit sticky, whereas the Harley Benton is nice and satinized. That could just be uh, a matter of taste, but so far, um, I wish I had a combination of the two. I wish I had the roasted maple neck, but with the feel of the Harley Benton. Damn it. More specs. So the Jet Guitars has a nine and a half inch radius, whereas the Harley Benton has 350 millimeters. What's 350 millimeters in inches? Hey Siri. What's 350 millimeters in inches? 350 millimeters is 13.78 inches. My goodness, so it's much, much flatter. It's, it's almost 14 uh, inch radius on the, on the Harley Benton, which is extremely uh, non-traditional. And the, even the, the Jet is, is nine and a half, which is slightly more vintage, but not as vintage as it could be. I, I, I dig a nine and a half inch radius. 14, that's huge, or flat, whichever way you look at it. Um, then we've got 22 frets on the Harley Benton, 22 frets on the Jet. We've got triple single coil ceramic pickups in the Jet. They don't specify what they are. And then in the Harley Benton, we've got three Roswell STA Alnico 5 vintage Strat style single coil coils. Blah. Both guitars have double action truss rods, meaning you can make it bow this way or that way. So well done. That should be on every guitar, in my opinion. And we've got a bone nut on the Jet. And on the Harley Benton, it doesn't say, so probably plastic. They also feature the same nut width, which is 42 millimeters on both. I'm not trying to dumb this down in any way. I'm just very aware that some people watching this might be new to guitar and those specs might have meant nothing whatsoever. I did include them for those that do want to know, but you can also find more information uh, on the websites, which you can find in the video description if you want the full specs, of course. However, I think what we can take from that is both guitars are very, very similar on, a, on paper, which is why I'm comparing these two models. Uh, the main difference being the Harley Benton has a flatter radius. So if I take the Harley Benton, that means that the fretboard here is flatter. It's, it's not flat, it's still curving around at 14 degrees. And the Jet Guitars is curving around at nine and a half degrees, which makes it feel rounder and, um, and slightly more vintage. The next biggest difference, I guess, is the pickups uh, and the electronics. So the pickups in this Harley Benton are Alnico 5, which is a type of magnet. And um, the one in the Jet Guitars is ceramic, which is again, a type of magnet, just a, a different type. So they're gonna sound different, even, um, even without thinking about what's going on with the, with the body materials. That's quite a surprise. They sound very, very different unplugged. Come here, you beast. That feels like the strings on this are, are low quality. Um, there's more definition on the Harley Benton, but there's less Oh God, this is getting silly. Uh, there's more note definition on the Harley Benton, so it sounds clearer, but this one has more high frequencies. So again, it sounds clearer in a different way. New strings is definitely needed on the Jet Guitars, and I hope the Jet Guitars do change their string supplier because I found that with every Jet Guitars that their strings um, are, are less than uh, optimal. The next logical step for me is to check the tuning stability. Does it stay in tune? Because if you're new to guitar, then someone may have tuned your guitar for you. If you then go off and play it and it immediately goes out of tune, that's a big problem. That being said, in this price range of the, of the two guitars, um, there's a lot of variance between the models. So you might get a really good Harley Benton or a not so good Harley Benton. And you might get a really, really great Jet or a really, really not so great Jet. You know, it, it's a lot of variance in this price range. That's why people spend more money on guitars sometimes, there's more reliability. That's not to say that today is the case, but before we check the tuning stability, I can only check the models I have. Okay, first up, the Harley Benton. Is it in tune? 
It's in tune. I'm now going to play around with it. Uh, some of that will be for you, some of that will be in fast forward, and um, see if it stays in tune after some regular guitar playing, hopefully. <laughs> Okay, that's some um, some random playing along with some fairly normal playing. No tremolo arm, by the way, not yet. That's pretty close. It's not there, but it's pretty close. That for me is acceptable because everything slipped by about the same amount, meaning that I think these strings need uh, stretching out a little bit. So if you are new to guitar and you've bought a guitar, before you leave the shop, make, so, make sure someone has done this and stretched the strings. Not too much because you're gonna snap it off. But all I'm doing is pulling it, hang on, I'll show on that camera. All I'm doing is pulling it a little bit away from the fretboard, like so. There we go. And now if I put that and play it again, it should be out of tune. That's fair, that's to be expected. And aside, I really like that. That's nice, not only just nice to play, but nice sound. Okay, now that I've stretched the strings out, it does feel a lot more stable. So as I said, if you're gonna get a guitar, um, any guitar in fact, make sure you stretch the strings out before you say, huh, this thing doesn't stay in tune. Also, the tuning experience was very nice. These are quite tight uh, and there's not much give, so make sure you always go below the note and then come back up to the note. Sorry, my computer did something weird then. I got a new email and the whole screen changed. Right, let's do the same with the Jet Guitars JS300. I'm gonna tune it, check it's in tune, play it, and then try and tune it again if it needs it. Okay, it's in tune. Uh, let's play around and see if I can put it out of tune. Hey luck everybody, I'm Ryan Burke. Burgers. Okay, I've played around with it enough. Let's see if it's still in tune. There was a lot of bottom end there. Anyway, it's fairly in tune. That G has dropped down. So the good news is that everything dropped down a little bit, which means these strings need stretching out. I'll do that now. Okay, testy, testy. Okay, that's supposed to happen. Let's retune. Back in tune. Now, we're gonna do some wobbly boy action. This is the tremolo arm, and I'm going to play around with that ever so slightly, just in a sort of wavery kind of way. I'm not gonna dive bomb it yet. Here we go. Let's 
Let's put some surfy verb on. I think it sounds great. I'm pleased with how that stayed in tune. Um, I'm going to have to take the back off in a moment to show you what's going on inside because the trem system is very stiff. So if I just play something. I'm going to have to really push that down. It's quite a workout, but let's check the Harley Benton because that was also pretty stiff. In tune to begin with, yes. And then um, up the mix. There's a lot of play in that arm. Hang on, let me turn it around one more. Two more. That requires a lot of pushing, and I think that's a good thing for both guitars, for both the Jet and the Harley Benton. Come here, Jet. Uh, because if you're buying this as a newcomer to guitar, and I'm avoiding the word beginner there, uh, a newcomer to this style of guitar, I should say, with the trem system, if that trem system is too floppy and you're pushing it around and pulling it around all the time, I think that's a bad thing. I think that this stays in tune. Have I checked the tuning? Let me continue, I'll check the tuning. It stays pretty well in tune and that's why it's good that it's stiff. Because if it were if it were not stiff, then it, um, it might not stay in tune. Let's check the tuning on this Harley Benton. They're both about the same in terms of tuning stability, which is great news um, because the Harley Benton is only 129 euros and it stays in tune and the Jet is only 169 euros and it stays in tune. And that is extremely important. Before you even think about how this guitar sounds or how it looks, maybe not how it looks, but before you think about how this guitar sounds, you've got to check out if it's stable when it comes to tuning. Let's move on to the next test. Okay, that's an interesting discovery. Have a look at that. That's got some tape over the springs to stop the springs rattling and ringing about. Um, interesting. Also interesting, a full block. It may not be the world's best metal, but it is a full block, meaning you're getting um, your full money's worth there. There's a solder joint just here, which looks nice and strong. Let's see how hard this is to take off. Extremely. Um, because it's got 22 frets, the neck goes over the fret, the, the pick guard just a little bit, which means I can't get the pick guard out without taking the strings off. Before I put the screws back in, I have to check the jack socket because that is the most common problem with guitars for, for beginners or newcomers. Their jack socket gets loose. Let's see if this one is loose or tight. 
it's really well done. It's a really tight joint on that nut there and then a really good soldering job on the actual socket itself. So there are no complaints whatsoever with this. Well done, Jet Guitars. That'll keep uh, new players safe for years to come. We've got a similar story going on in the back of the Harley Benton. So we've got three springs, no tape in here, but I think the tape on the Jet Guitars is something special. We've got a half block back here, which frankly looks looks cheaper. I mean, it must be cheaper. And also, I think the Harley Benton loses out on trem block there. But a little soldering joint. The soldering joint does look a, looks fine, looks strong, but doesn't look as clean as the Jet Guitars. Not that it needs to. That's that's perfectly acceptable. You can also see the paint job in here as well. It's a very very similar story to the Jet Guitars in regards to painting quality. Over on the front, the similarities are the same. I cannot get the scratch plate off because it's held on by the neck and I don't want to take the neck off. So let's just take a little look-see down in here. There we go. Can I focus? Focus. It all looks very, very similar story when it comes to electronics and quality. Sadly, that's not the case for the jack output. Let's take a look at that. You can, well, you can hear it. It's wobbling, so um, I noticed while I was playing it earlier that the nut had gotten loose, and as I've been working on the guitar, the nut has worked its way loose. So I might as well show you how to fix that um, if you need to, you know, if you don't know how to do that. Let's open it up and take a look. Okay, so first thing is you take those two screws out, and then when you pop that out, very carefully pull that out, and as you can see, that's rotating like that. In fact, if I use this camera, you can see it even better. So there we are, and as I turn that, it's rotating, and it shouldn't be. The worst thing you can do is not to take those screws out and try and fix it by just turning that with a screwdriver or, or something. Um, a screwdriver, a pair of pliers. What you really need to do is that, I can't do it, I've got one hand, is you need to hold that inside and then turn the nut from the outside. If you do it the other way, by not taking those screws out and going inside, you probably will rip the wires out and then you'll have a guitar that definitely doesn't work. So. Yeah, this needs to be fixed. So Harley Benton did not pass the nut test. Everything's put back on, so let's find out how much the Harley Benton weighs. Don't panic. This is how Chris Barocci weighs guitars, and if Chris Barocci weighs guitars like this, then it's fine by me. Apart from he gets it on there first time. <laughs> Here we go. This is three, three, Six three five kilograms. Three six three five kilograms. The Jack guitars. Come on, baby. Is zero that. So that feels lighter. There we go. Right. Whoa. Okay. Jack guitars. JS three hundred is three five. Seven zero. I was right. It is lighter. Now, for the purpose of this comparison, I think the sounds are the least important thing that should be considered because if you're buying this guitar, then you may or may not be buying for the sounds. I don't know. But I'm still going to play the guitars and show you every pickup and make sure that I've covered a little bit of ground with the sound. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
So I'll say it again, I think the sound samples in this video are definitely the wrong way to choose the guitar, even though I do have some sounds I quite like. I much preferred the bridge pickup of the Jet Guitars JS300, but I could sit on that middle and neck pickup of the Harley Benton all day long. I think that was a wonderfully woody tone, and generally speaking, I think the pickups in the Harley Benton are better, and therefore the sound translates better. Um, Jet Guitars are quite open that their, their pickups are entry level, beginner level, you know, cheap. And if there's anything you want to change in a Jet Guitar, change the pickups, and that will certainly take the tone uh, above where it is when you buy it and it comes out of the box. I'm not going to go into modding projects with these guitars in this video. We're going to keep them stock, although I might give some opinions on modding here and there. To compare the two companies for a moment, Harley Benton is of course the house brand from Toman, which means it has the buying power, the marketing power, all that knowledge and statistics and stuff of Toman, a multinational music uh, retailer. Jet Guitars is a much smaller company, the sister company of Flight Ukuleles, and even though they've got some experience in the business, they're still very, very new and they're buying and making less guitars. Therefore, the Harley Benton being cheaper at 129 is also to do with the fact that Harley Benton are building a lot of them, and Jet Guitars are not building so many. So there's that to consider when you consider the price. That being said, there is uh, some clear definition on where money is being spent with these guitars. Firstly, the build quality of both is excellent for the price, because it is a budget guitar. It's put together well, there are no blem finishes, problems, although I can't guarantee that I wasn't sent uh, an extra cherry-picked one. I don't know. The guitars are very pleasant to look at. Both finishes are great. Um, there is no issue whatsoever with anything on any of the guitars when it comes to construction quality, apart from the Harley Benton's jack output socket, which broke, not broke, but came loose twice during the filming of this video, and I fixed it properly with my tools, and it came loose again, so I'm now on the third fixing. Uh, that, I think, is is not very forgivable because as a beginner guitar player, if you're watching this, you might have an issue with that jack and that could lead you into all sorts of problems. So Harley Benton really need to make sure their jack sockets are tight. The jack guitars, however, uh, the JS300, didn't fail at all. Um, it just stayed solid throughout. Let's talk about the trem system. They both have this six-screw vintage style trem system and they're both really hard to work with. They're both set really with a lot of tension in those strings at the back. So if you're into your fluttery little uh, Strat trem movements, these guitars, both of them, would need some work. If you are inexperienced in trem systems and you, you kind of want to razz it about a little bit, there's quite a little bit of play in um, both guitars, the Harley Benton more. There's a bit more play in that arm than, than the Jet guitars. However, I think it being so stiff is a good thing because it means you're not going to play too much with the trem system because that could put the guitar out of tune. And if you don't know how to tune it yourself, then you're in a uh, trouble city. A plus point for the Harley Benton is that the pickup selector switch is definitely superior to that in the Jet Guitars. The Jet Guitars is longer, a little bit wobbly, and I preferred the one in the Harley Benton. I only got to know that through those playing samples. The massive plus point for the Jet Guitars is the roasted maple neck, because that thing feels much more expensive than it is. And if necks are your thing, you know, you're into a nice neck, if it's, it's glossy, the Jet Guitars, but it is solid, it feels tight, it feels, it feels like a roasted maple neck. The Harley Benton, of course, isn't roasted, but it is satin, which makes it more appealing to me. But because it isn't roasted, there's been some shrinkage of the wood, so you can feel the fret wire either side, specifically up on the, the top sort of 13th and 15th fret uh, on the E string when you're playing up there if you ever do go up the dusty end. So yeah, there's a bit of fret sprout going on up there. Nothing that can't be fixed simply. It's not sort of hand slicing. It's just very, very noticeable. The nut of the Harley Benton is not specified, so it's probably plastic or something synthetic. The nut on the Jet Guitars is bone, and they both offer kind of the same lubricant factor. Uh, there was no string slippage, nothing was really sticking, even though it was a trem guitar. I was impressed with both. Again, I can't say if these have been altered, because I don't know, but I can tell you the guitars I have, nothing was clicking in the nut. No, nothing was stopping it from sliding through that nut wonderfully. Uh, even the action was good. The setup on both was okay. 
Um, yeah, if you're worried about sort of setup, at least the ones I have are fine. Your mileage may vary. Now, one of the most important things about guitars in this price range is the playability factor and the feel. I love the way the Jet Guitars JS300 sits into the body. It's a little bit more comfortable than the Harley Benton for me. Um, generally speaking, I prefer the feel of the JS300, but there's not that much in it. It really, really isn't. That being said, when I hold the Harley Benton, the neck feels more expensive than it is. If it weren't for that fret sprout, this would win uh, in the neck feel category, but it can't because I can feel the frets. So therefore the roasted maple neck is a better choice. At this stage, I know there are plus points and minus points for both guitars, and I can't say that this video has been very helpful to you because it seems to be a matter of preference. What I will say is that there are loads of Harley Bentons being made, not so many Jets, so they're not as available, the Jet guitars. So if you're looking for a cheap Strat guitar, you might want to get the Harley Benton because they are mostly available all the time. That obviously changes. And Jet is working on its distribution um, and they're getting you know, more and more widely available. It is just a matter of taste, I think. Finally, if you're looking for sounds, I think I would recommend the Harley Benton right now. So if you want something stock that sounds great, go for Harley Benton. If you want something that plays great, then spend that extra money and find one, go for the Jet Guitars JS300. The JS300 is a better playing guitar. The Harley Benton sounds better stock. I had fun today. I hope the video helped. Um, it helped me for sure, because it was a question that was burning in my heart, which one's better, and still haven't answered it. They're, they're just different. All right, um, thank you. Thank you for watching. Welcome to the end of the video. This means that your cable's just fallen down. This means you've made it to the end of the video, which means you're in the end of the video club and to prove that you are a member of this prestigious elite, when you leave your comment down below telling me which guitar that you preferred, also include the phrase Stratalicious. And that'll let me know that you made it this far in the video and you know, it'll all feel a, a feeling of togetherness, which is it's good no matter who you are. I'll wrap this video up by saying thank you to Jet Guitars and Harley Benton for lending me the ST62 and the JS300. I had a lot of fun. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, then you know thumbs down and, and leave some sad faces. Also, go and check out the videos over there because I'm doing more guitar things right there in front of your very eyes. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.